to yesterday's Camogie final. Fiona Hickey joins us. Fiona, good morning to you. How are you getting on? Hi, how are you getting on? Nice to see you, Ben. Uh, incredible drama at the end. Was the result a fair one or would actually a draw, if if the last chance had gone over, would that have been kind of what the doctor ordered? What did you think? Yeah, yeah, I probably think the Cork really probably deserved the draw in the end. Uh, you wouldn't have thought it after 15 minutes or so, um, or even before the game. I genuinely, I would have thought that Kilkenny, you know, they've been the most consistent team all year. And um, I thought that they, I suppose, I thought that they'd let cut loose in this final, but Cork, Cork stopped that happening. You know, they didn't get going for a while, but, um, and it was just, yeah, I suppose Cork could come out with the draw. Ashling Thompson, as you've seen her hit those points, you know, day in, day out, but it was such a pressure shot. So um, I suppose a draw, yeah, could have been could have been the fair result on the day. But uh, Kilkenny, to be fair, have been on the on the losing side from you know little you know points the Cork has scored near the end of games as well. So it was kind of it was, it was good for them to come out on the right side of it for once. Is that something you've seen change with Kilkenny over the last few years? The fact that they can grind out these big games in the big moments. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, like you think back to 2020 and uh, I suppose Denise Gall was a bit of a hero again yesterday, but in 2020 when she'd stand up to take that penalty, you know, in the dying minutes, she stuck it. And I suppose the consistency of management and the consistency of players, now they've lost a few from last year, obviously, but, you know, they still have their, you know, their great mix of, you know, experience and I suppose younger players, but um, the driving force there, Denise Gall, Miriam Walsh, Claire Phelan, they're all still there. And I, I do think that like Brian, Brian Dowling has just done great work with them, I suppose, yeah, mentally, uh, to be able to grind out these wins now. So it's, you know, it's great, great for them. What happened in that first half after the comeback from Cork and maybe a little bit of a retreat from Kilkenny? Was, was there a tactical shift or, or what caught your eye in, in those few minutes? Yeah, it was such an interesting um, period. It, I would actually say that Kilkenny probably didn't capitalise enough on, um, I suppose, Cork's slow start. They had the same slow start against Waterford, so I suppose Kilkenny could have been prepared first and could have, you know, hit the juggler a few times. I think they, they probably didn't capitalise enough on this slow start from Cork. And I suppose once Cork settled into it, I really thought that uh, Fanola Neville had a great game there at centre forward yesterday. And to, you know, Katrina Mackey was actually free inside. She easily could have hand passed off that ball for Katrina to kind of stick it in the back of the net. But Fanola said, I'm I'm doing this myself. Like she's been a real, a super, super asset to Cork this year, especially with Orda Cronin missing. So, um, yeah, I suppose Cork just settled into it. And, and, you know, they took off their, they picked off their scores one by one. It was, it was a slow comeback, but to go in, a draw at half time after you know going down you know six points and you know they really Kilkenny did you know were lucky to be going in at a draw at half time so um yeah I suppose Cork just settled into it it's been a slow start I saw Paddy Murray talking about it on the on the Sunday game last night you know they've had two you know slow starts and he reckons you know I don't know that things aren't set up as they should be I suppose maybe I don't know Yes, it, it is interesting because you mentioned the Waterford game and it's two games in a row now where uh, they've been in a slow start and I guess it probably cost them in the end then yesterday, all things considered. like, Is it something to do with their style of play, like the, the hard running through the middle? Does that just take maybe a quarter of a game just to get fully up to speed or or is that just reading into it a little bit too much? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe... I suppose with the change of management, the chain change in, I suppose, the addition of, you know, as we all know, David Fitz is there in the backroom team as well. It's probably taken Cork maybe, you know, they were so used to the game they were playing. I suppose a few key players missing, Orla Cronin, Orla Cotter's not there, you know. I suppose maybe it's just taking a while. I, I the, the term transition is used a bit. I suppose they are seriously in transition at the moment with their you know their older experienced players their younger players coming through great girls coming up from minor um and i suppose just with the change in management it probably has set them back a small bit this year but to still reach you know an honor and fun only lose, lose by a point they're just they just don't go away cork are not going away um so that's a real credit to them you know um but i suppose getting to grips with the new new coaches on the sideline, new management, you know, it's it's not easy even for teams that have, you know, been together and been so successful like Cork for years, you know. It is an incredible um, staying power by both these teams. When you think back to that All-Ireland final in 2016, the Kilkenny won by four points. Since then, like they were, they played each other the following two years after that. Uh, Kilkenny were only beaten by Galway and sorry, Kilkenny lost both those. Kilkenny were beaten by Galway the, the year after, came back and beat Galway and then Cork, played Galway last year and 
they end up back here again. Like, is, are, is this a proper golden age rivalry between the two teams at the moment? And is the needle, um, the needle certainly would seem the, to suggest it is? The top, the top three are there and they're about, not there, they're about, they're there. That they're always, you know, you have your Kilkenny Cork and Galway, and it's so hard for other teams at the moment to try and break through. I do think, you know, Waterford had a really, really good chance this year of, uh, you know, coming through that Cork semi final. You know, they put up a great performance against them, but again, as you said, it's the staying power. I suppose it's the mentality. Cork just, they just keep coming back, and, you know, I suppose Waterford would be the closest at the moment to kind of coming close to the top three, but I really thought that once Kilkenny had kind of, you know, Kilkenny and Galway would have been the best two teams in the country this year, I would have said. And I suppose Kilkenny got the harder semi-final um, draw against Galway. Um, but to, when they overcame Galway, I genuinely thought that they would be, you know, they'd breeze into this All-Ireland final and they'd really take it in their stride. But, you know, again, all credit due to Cork. They really, you know, put, put a halt to the gallop after, you know, uh, they took off at such a high speed. One of the things that, we, you know, that... that um we've talked about there is, is Kilkenny's ability to come back from these heartbreaking defeats Cork are now going to be charged with doing the same thing but uh, do we expect the same Cork team it's obviously as we know some changes in the backroom team Davies Fitz has, has stepped away so uh, will some of those older players step away now too do you think yeah it's a, it's a hard it's a hard one to say like they haven't won silverware in a while now you know I know those girls are just you know they'll be you know in agony this morning waking up you know the likes of Ashton Thompson you have you know Katrina Mackey has been such a soldier for Cork over the years Chloe Sigerson, um I suppose Laura Tracy to you know put the hand up there at centre back as well there's those girls around for a long time they're still not you know none of them I'd say they're not even 30 some of them do you know what I mean so they're, they're still there's I don't know I think they'll be hurting and I do think that the the draw of winning silverware could bring them back but you know, as I said, I do believe that Kilkenny and Galway are the best two teams in the country at the moment. So, you know, whether they see it as, you know, I suppose a goal of theirs to come back and try to, you know, get back in the in the top two teams in the country. It's, it, you know, it, it's, it's a tough mountain to climb now, as I said, the transition, between the transition of the younger players, the older players. You know, we saw Jim O'Connor stepping away last year. I don't. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think t- time will tell. They're not. You know, there there is still something for them to get out of this championship um, next year. But um, I suppose yeah, time will tell. In terms of the the difference between the two teams yesterday, is it just that uh, at the very last minute the free goes over and Ashton Thompson misses, and you know that's sport. Sometimes one team wins. They're not necessarily the better team, even though coming into the game you thought they had been the better team. In the end, there was nothing between these sides. Yeah, I genuinely thought that Kilkenny, as I said, had been the most consistent team all year. And um, yeah, I suppose the goal was it was a funny one. You know, um, Kilkenny didn't really look like you know they didn't. Cork's defensive setup was quite good. They didn't really look like they could have. You know, they didn't come close to scoring a goal. I suppose all throughout the game and. But they really, really pressed on. They knew they had to score that goal. And, you know, it was very disappointing for Amy Lee. You know, I don't think she made, you know, a huge mistake, really. She'd set up to save a goal because they needed a goal. It was the last minute of the match. She knew there was going to be a goal shot coming in. Uh, it ended up taking a dirty deflection. It was loopy. You know, she ended up backtracking. It was just, it was, I suppose, in a way, it was nice for Kilkenny to get a break like that because, as I said, Cork were so used to getting those little breaks in, in, in all Ireland finals in 2017, 2018. Like, but, you know, do those breaks just happen because of luck or is it, you know, they're grinding them out really? Like, I, I, I don't know. I think that, I do think Kilkenny on form all year, you know, deserved to win yesterday, but, you know, you can't, you don't, no one deserves to win in all Ireland. Like, you have to, you have to grind it out. Um, so yeah had you Kilkenny down as your All-Ireland champions before the year began when you take into account all the retirements the people who've gone travelling obviously the, the bad injuries uh, that happened to a couple of their players did that dissuade you at all before the championship began that they might not get over the line I suppose there's been injuries and travelling and retirements everywhere really so no mm. I, I still think even with the likes of um, the Doyle sisters and doing their cruciates I suppose Galway had their fair share of bad news as well and Rebecca Henley and Orla McGrath and um, Cork, I suppose, as we know, Orla Cronin was a huge loss there yesterday. So I still, th- I think with all the all the players that ended up, you know, not playing this year in the senior championship, it was all kind of, 
every team, you know, suffered their their blows, I think. So I still would have said Kilkenny, um, yeah, would have been my front runners, even even with the I suppose Katie Power being back as well was huge. Um so she was a nice little addition back into the team when um for that all Ireland final after missing it, you know, uh, through injury in twenty twenty. So um I, I think in the grand scheme of things, every team suffered their blows. Every every team this year, I suppose, had a lot to deal with between, with injuries. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think it made you know Kilkenny had the had the depth in their panel to just you know bring on bring on you know girls who with little experience. Like um, yeah, so I don't think it made a huge difference. No, I still would have said Kilkenny would have been number one for me anyway. Uh, Katie Nolan got player of the match on TV last night. Was was that the correct call, or could potentially Miriam Walsh have been able to shout for that as well? Miriam was unreal from play, and uh, myself and Sarah Donovan are big fans of Miriam Walsh. We'll, we'll always, uh, yeah, always back her up. Um, just an unbelievable talent. Uh, just to have someone such a presence in the square at all times, and just she she got some fantastic scores yesterday. But Katie Nolan, I think, deserved yeah her man of the match um, award. Um, just so solid on the freeze, and just to have the I suppose Denise Gall, unbelievable free taker. Denise decided yesterday, you know, she missed one and. Here you go, Katie. Up to you now. And Katie just, you know, relished the challenge. Um, she was fantastic from play. So solid on the freeze. Um, yeah, I think she was great. Yeah, super, super um, player for Kilkenny. And has just had a really consistent year. So definitely well-deserving um, of her man of the match yesterday. Definitely, yeah. We should probably give uh, a mention to the junior final as well, which Antrim won. And one of the great performances we're ever likely to see on All-Ireland final day came from Dervla Cosgrove, who scored four goals and two points hat trick of goals in the space of 84 seconds um, yeah. I'm not sure like the, the David Clifford playing minor for Kerry kind of comes to mind when you see those sort of statistics <laughs> yeah. Jeez what a dream day for them like I, I saw our man playing uh, this year actually against our Limerick junior team they gave him a, a bit of a hide and they were unreal like our man were fantastic and for Antrim to come out and just have a performance like that as you said um, I think um I think Jarvis took it into her own hands, you know, there at one stage. She just, oh my God, she could do no wrong, like, you know, scoring, yeah, one of the quickest hat tricks in, scored in probably many sports, you know. So it was absolutely, it was amazing. I was actually just so delighted for them because they just didn't even let our, our, our man play yesterday, you know. They, they were so used to playing so freely and putting up such high scores, and it was just really entrance day yesterday, yeah. How important are those intermediate and junior grades in terms of being a pointer for maybe next season and some of the talent that might come through to some of the, the senior teams? Because I know Brian Dowling was making that point around Sophie Dwyer coming off the intermediate panel this year and saying, listen, I'm going to be a senior. Yeah, and same like Finola Neville there for Cork, um, you know, starting centre forward yesterday. She was playing with intermediate, intermediates for, you know, a few years as well. So you see there Cork did have their intermediate team laying yesterday. Galway had theirs. That's just a sign of how strong those two counties are. I do think um, the second string teams in the counties um, are so important for development. You know, those girls can go off and play, you know, in-house matches, 60 players there, you know, between the two squads. But not only for second string teams, but for the likes of Antrim, Armagh, you know, winning, you know, yesterday for Antrim is huge. Antrim are taking part in, you know, senior, you know, league this year. They put up great, um, or they're, they're, they're absolutely flying it up there. And it's just such a, I suppose, the day out in Croke Park, you know, it's amazing. We were there, you know, we won the intermediate in 2014. It's just such an important day out for counties. It's great to see some silverware coming back and I suppose just getting some some recognition for all the hard work you put in all year and just being able to, you know, play on the biggest stage and the biggest day, it, it's, it's so important. And attendance figures were quite good yesterday. So I suppose um, just a bit more promotion needed now. Um, I suppose getting Glenn, Glenn Dimplex in this year as sponsors is amazing just to, you know, um, freshen it up a small bit. So I just think that, uh, yeah, Mogi's in a good place, but these junior, intermediate, th those finals are so, so, so important um, for both developing your second string team players into senior players and for the counties that are, you know, competing at the junior grade just to kind of take the step up then the following year. Yeah, well, there's no reason why Antrim shouldn't be competing at senior level given the size of the county and the resources available to them and their tradition of producing senior All-Ireland winning teams. Like, um, you know, the the uh, Antrim GA has had a lot of help but needs a lot of help and certainly um, you would hope that they're getting their house in order. W one last question for you. Who's the player of the year? Oh, I don't know. Um... She's hard to look past. I think Denise Gall again. I just think she's been so solid all year. Like and 
Um, yeah, I'm just going to, yeah, I, I go Denise. I just think absolutely the one player you'd want on your side to be able to step up, uh, to, to give away, to be able to admit that, oh, geez, I'm not having a great day on the freeze, to give them to another player. And then the dying minutes, there's another free. And t- this is mine. Hand up. I'm going to score this. She did. She popped it over the bar. I just think for consistency, for that's a girl I'd like to yeah have on my team. She needs right. again. Fiona, good stuff. We leave it there. Thanks a million. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Bye. That's Fiona Hickey there giving us her thoughts on the All Ireland Camogie finals.